What's up everyone and thank you for choosing to learn with Lam. Today we're going to be learning how to calculate heat. Now the math itself isn't too complicated, but knowing what data comes from where can mess some people up, so we'll make sure to take care of that. First off, let's make sure we're all on the same page when it comes to what heat is. Heat is the amount of thermal energy transferred from a system to its surroundings or vice versa. So essentially, heat is a measure of the change in energy. We calculate heat using the equation Q equals mc delta T, where Q is heat, measured in joules, m is mass, measured in grams, c is the specific heat capacity, and its unit is joules per gram Celsius. Different substances have different specific heat capacities, so we'll be looking up these values in the table. And lastly, delta T is the change in temperature, which we measure in degrees Celsius. I always find it easiest to learn through examples, so let's jump right into our first problem. A sample of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in 50.0 milliliters of water. The temperature of the water increases from 23.5 degrees Celsius to 26.1 degrees Celsius. What amount of heat was transferred to the water? Now, right off the bat, we can see that we're looking for heat, so let's write our heat equation down again. But also notice that we are specifically looking for the heat transferred to water. This means that all of our information needs to be about water. All of it. Mass of water, specific heat capacity of water, and change in temperature of water. Now, the first thing that I should be looking for here is mass, but I don't have that information. Luckily, I do have volume, so let's write that down. Volume equals 50.0 milliliters. Something that we're assumed to know is the density of water, which is one gram per milliliter. So we're going to use that to determine mass. Just a reminder that mass equals density times volume. So one gram per milliliter times 50.0 milliliters. We'll cancel out the milliliters and we're left with 50.0 grams of water. Perfect. As I mentioned earlier, specific heat capacity is unique to each substance, so we'll need to look this one up. The specific heat capacity of liquid water is 4.184 joules per gram Celsius. That leaves only the change in temperature, and delta T is calculated as T final minus T initial, both of which we have, so 26.1 degrees Celsius minus 23.5 degrees Celsius gives me 2.6 degrees Celsius. Now that I have all my values, I can cancel out my units, and that gives me positive 543.92 joules of energy, which I'll round to positive 5.4 times 10 to the power of 2 joules for significant digits. But this isn't the only type of heat question that you may get. Let's look at another problem. Cold water is poured into an aluminum can with a mass of 5.00 grams. The can loses 50.0 joules of energy, and its final temperature is measured to be 10.0 degrees Celsius. What was the can's initial temperature? Now, it's a little less obvious that this is a heat problem, but taking a look at the variables we're given gives us a good hint. So here's my heat equation. Notice that this time I'm looking at an aluminum can, so all my information needs to be about aluminum. Now, just for the record, for the sake of clarity and simplicity, I didn't include any information about the cold water in this problem. But even if I did, you need to know that that would just be a distraction in the problem. All the information that you need in this problem needs to be about aluminum. All right, so let's rearrange this equation here to solve for delta T. For heat, the can is losing 50.0 joules, so I'm going to write negative 50.0 joules. Mass is 5.00 grams, and we'll look up the specific heat capacity of aluminum. It's 0.897 joules per gram Celsius. Cancel out the units and throw it into the calculator and I get negative 11.148 degrees Celsius. But remember that we're looking for the initial temperature, not the change, so we're not quite done yet. Delta T equals T final minus T initial, so my equation is negative 11.148 degrees Celsius equals my final temperature, which is 10.0 degrees Celsius minus T initial. I'll add T initial to both sides, so my T initial is positive. That gives me T initial minus 11.148 degrees Celsius equals 10.0 degrees Celsius. 
and then I'll add 11.148 degrees Celsius to both sides to isolate for T initial. That gives me 21.1 degrees Celsius as my initial temperature. And that's all there is to it. As always, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Good job, everyone. If you find that you need a little extra help, please feel free to check out my other videos for tips and tricks on how to succeed in school. And as always, thanks for learning with Lamb.